YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury on a budget. So if you're into that sort of thing, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done that already. Like the videos and click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post a new video. Today I have a new handbag reveal for you. It's new to me. This bag has been out for a little while, I think. And it's a designer bag, but it might not be what you think based on the thumbnail. We'll see what your guesses are. Go ahead and, and look at the thumbnail and guess what the bag is and pause the video and write down below what you think it is before I reveal. I'll give you a second. All right, time's up. Here's the bag. It is a dupe of the Louis Vuitton Favorite MM, but it's by Coach. So here's the bag. I'll do a little uh, spin for you. Can you hear the traffic outside? I'm filming this before work and people are out there already on their way to work. The top, the bottom, and I'll go through it a little bit more in detail and show you the inside too. This is called the Alexa and I actually saw someone wearing this. I don't know when or where it was. It was a little while ago and it comes with a chain that I'll show you. She was wearing it crossbody, and I saw it kind of from an angle like this and, and thought that it was a Vuitton bag. I thought that they'd come out with a black favorite, but no, it's a coach bag. I got this a few days ago at Macy's. They had it on clearance. Where's the tag? I'm not sure what I did with the tag, but it was originally something like $225, something like that. And they had it on clearance for 135. And I think they still have them. I wanted to go ahead and get this posted pretty quickly so that if you wanted to get one, you could. They have it in this smooth black leather, but they also have this croc print. And they have two metallics that I've seen. One I saw in person was like a silver kind of crackled almost metallic. And it was almost a champagne gold. And then on eBay, I saw a blue metallic bag. So if you're interested in this bag, it does come in a few other options besides this. And Coach is still selling this on their website, but it's full price there. Again, it's called the Alexa. So I wanted to show you this because it is very similar to the Louis Vuitton favorite bag. And I know a lot of people love that bag. I was considering getting one, but first of all, it's really hard to find. And then I don't wear small bags that often, and I already have the Louis Vuitton Eva, which is also brown, like the favorite would be. The favorite comes in monogram, in a Ben, and in Azure. I didn't want it in Azure, I wanted monogram. But I already have this, and they serve kind of the same function, even though the favorite's a little bit bigger. I also have my pochette, pochette accessoire that I could wear, attach a chain to, or a longer strap and wear crossbody. In addition to that bag being so difficult to find, I couldn't justify spending that much on a bag that I wouldn't wear very often that would be brown when I already have two other brown bags. As much as I would like to have a Louis Vuitton favorite, just couldn't justify that. So when I saw this one, and it's basically the same bag, but it's black, which is nice because I would like to have had a black bag that was a smaller sort of evening bag or just if I wanted a smaller light bag to carry fewer things or when my back's bothering me and I need a small bag. This is perfect. So when I saw this, I jumped on it. I'm pretty sure this is still on sale because the tag, which I kept but cannot find currently. It's on a pile somewhere in my desk. This was on clearance. It was marked with a clearance tag, so I don't think it was just a temporary sale. It seemed to be that that's the new price on these bags and they're gonna go for that price until they sell out. So if you're interested, run over to the Macy's website real quick and buy yourself one. So I'm gonna show you some things about this bag. I wanna talk about some pros and cons. I'm gonna show you what I have carried in it. I'm not gonna do a full wet fits, but I'll show you what I carried in it. And then I got a great question that I wanna address, which is if you're going to get an inspired bag, a bag that's inspired by a high-end designer like Vuitton or Chanel, would it be better to get one of the cheap $30 bags like I talked about in my last video with the Chanel inspired bags from Amazon? or get one of the high street brands like Coach or Tory Burch or Kate Spade. So I'm gonna answer that question, give you my opinion on it. All right, so let's look at this bag in a little more detail. This has the front flap closure. It has the pleating on the side, just like the Vuitton bags. And this does seem very sturdy. It, it doesn't seem like it's going to flatten out or warp over time. It seems like it's shaped very well. The back has a pocket which the Vuitton bag does not have. 
and that's a huge bonus for me because everybody wants to keep their phone in a back pocket, right, and not have to get inside your bag for it. That's lined in this kind of reddish brown micro suede. The bottom has structure, so it's not just one piece that's folded over. The base has a little structure to it. And the top is just the flap over. So this has the twist lock with the C. It's in an antique gold, so it's not real bright and shiny and in your face. And you just twist that lock, open it up. It has that reddish brown micro suede inside. The inside opens up really big. You still have to be able to close it so you can close it. But there you go. And it has this pocket here, little slit pocket. And what I did yesterday when I took this to the grocery store was I just put my grocery list in that pocket. I noticed that it was a little bit difficult to slip the piece of paper in there because of the micro suede. It kind of catches that the texture it doesn't make it really slippery. So I had to pull the pocket out a little to slip the paper in. Not a big deal, just mentioning it. And it has these two little D-rings here that you can fold out if you want to attach the chain or fold back in if you want to hide them and carry them as a clutch. On the hardware here, and it'll be on both sides of this twist, you can see where it says coach engraved right there. You probably can't tell what it says, but that's what it says. And let me show you what fits and I'll put the chain on and another strap that I carried with it. So I'm putting my Chanel Boy card holder, my coach card holder, my phone in the back, a pen in the bottom, and I'll show you this in a second, clay, pills, and my reading glasses. That's what I carried to the grocery store and there is still plenty of room for more stuff here if I needed to carry anything else. It definitely adds weight to the bag, but the bag by itself is very lightweight and that's a big plus for me too because of my back. That's one of the reasons that I wanted to add a small bag to my collection. So there is the bag stuffed. Well, not stuffed, but with my stuff in it. And one thing I want to point out is you can tell my phone is there. So you can see how thin that leather is. And I want to talk about that in a few minutes because that's one of the cons of the bag. It's really the only con I've found so far. Let me put the chain on and show you what that looks like. So here is the chain with the bag. And I'll stand up and show you how it looks on. There's how it looks crossbody. I'm 5'3". And I think that works pretty well for me. And then if I was just to wear it on the shoulder, it hangs pretty low, but it's still um, reachable and a good length. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of chain straps for a few different reasons. So what I did was I put on this leather strap, and this is from another bag. It's from my Anafeel Kelly inspired bag. So I'm gonna put that on and show you what it looks like. Okay, here's the bag with the leather strap. Personally, I like that a lot better. This one happens to be shorter. It's also adjustable. So a lot of us have straps that are removable. A lot of us have a black strap in our closet already. So you could just take one of those and hook it on here. The little D-rings are pretty small, but I think most clips would fit that well. The other thing is this strap is a pebbled leather and the bag is a smooth leather. I don't think anyone would notice except me. So I'm not at all worried about it. I also pulled a few bag charms. I wanted to show, like hook those on there and see how they look. I think that's cute. Again, pebbled with smooth, doesn't bother me, but I like the tassel on it. And then I pulled one more, this Eiffel Tower sparkly charm. There's that. That I don't like as much, but eh, to each their own. Now let's talk about pros and cons. So pros, it's very similar to the favorite. So if you're into that bag, but you want a black one or a cheaper one, this would be a fantastic alternative for you. I like that it has the turn lock closure instead of the magnetic closure that the Vuitton bag has. I've seen some people say the magnets are really strong and work great. And other people say that it opens up on them and their things fall out. So this is more secure. Some of the favorite bags also tend to get a crease across here and I don't see that happening with this bag. Like I said, the sides are structured. I don't see them collapsing in or getting misshapen. I love that this has a back pocket. The Vuitton bag does not have that. I like the antique gold. I like the smooth black leather. I like that you have the option of the croc leather too and some other colors. Like the metallic blue was really pretty. I've only seen that on eBay, but 
You might want to check that out if you're into metallic blue bags. And then I do like the micro suede quite a bit. I think that makes it look more elegant. I like that it has the slip pocket there and it, it's surprisingly roomy for a small bag. That's something that I was worried about about the favorite. I mean, that's another idea here. This is one of the things I say about inspired bags. If you're interested in getting a high-end designer bag that's expensive like the favorite is, but you're not really sure if it would work for you, look for a cheaper style like this that you can try out and see if it would work before you spend that kind of money. And this being on sale right now would be a great option. Now let's talk about the thing that I don't like about this bag. So I bought this, like I said, at Macy's. I bought it online, did one of those buy online, pick up and store things. So when I went to pick it up, the lady pulled this out of the back for me and it was brand new. It was wrapped in the plastic, styrofoam, stuffed, everything. Brand spanking new. No one had ever touched it before. Luckily, I pulled it out. And if you do this at Macy's, pull your bag out before you leave and look at it. Because, let me show you, on the back, see the little indentations right there? It had indentations like that, but deeper, more noticeable on the front of the bag here. So I asked her, I didn't want a bag that looked like that brand new, so, and, and that wouldn't come out. So I asked if she had another one that I could look at that wasn't damaged, and she pulled this one out for me. And it looks better, it doesn't have the indentations on the front. Those on the back were there brand new. What I did notice is, you see the wrinkling around here? That wasn't on the first bag that she pulled out. So that's something else. And then I noticed when I took the bag out to dinner that night, and I had it laying on the table, you can see the wrinkling up here too. So it looks to me like that's just something about this leather or maybe that it's thin. Um, I mean, the flap, it's not like it just wobbles around. It, I mean, I don't know, can you see that? It's not totally structured where you can't bend it. And then when you open it, you see all the wrinkling in the back. That doesn't bother me, that's normal. It's gonna happen. It does seem to be a delicate, leather where it's going to wrinkle. I don't know how well this will wear over time. That's one of the reasons I'm also thinking about getting the croc one. That one seemed more durable to me, but I really preferred the smooth leather. The croc one, by the way, to me anyway, it looks vintage. It looks like it's from the 50s and I wanted something a little more sleek. But yeah, that's something to be aware of if you want to get this bag is to look for any damage to it when you get it look for the wrinkling, um, know that it's going to wrinkle over time. Now, I want to answer that fantastic question that one of you left on my last video about comparing the Chanel inspired bags. And the question was, if you're interested in one of these high-end designer bags, but you want to try out an inspired bag first, would I recommend going with one of the cheaper bags like the $30 bags on Amazon or with one of the high street brands like Coach, Tory Burch, Kate Spade, where you'll pay more. Here's my answer. I would think that the high street brands that tend to charge many hundreds of dollars for their bags, which to me is expensive. Vuitton, Chanel, Hermes, those are more expensive, but these are still expensive for most of us. I haven't looked too closely at these brands in a while, but when I went to pick this bag up at Macy's, I went over to the coach area and looked at some of their bags. I was really not impressed with the quality of a lot of them. So for me, I mean, this one I got a great deal on. And I'd say if you can get a great deal on a bag like this and it's a specific design that you're looking for, then sure, go for it. Especially if it's something that the higher end designer doesn't offer, like Vuitton doesn't have a black favorite. But if you wanna get a design just to try it out and then decide whether you want to get the higher end designer, personally, I would go with the cheaper bag because I think on the high street brands, when I have looked at them, the quality to me doesn't justify the price. And I find that to be true sometimes in the really high end brands too. I mean, Vuitton, as we know, is having all kinds of quality issues. So I'd say generally, I would probably go with the cheaper, like a $30 bag to try a style out, but it depends. If there's something that you're really interested in from a particular designer that costs more, go for it. I think it's just case by case basis. I'd love to know what you guys think about that. Maybe some of you are more familiar with the high street brands than I am. Maybe you think the quality is better. I'd love to hear your opinion on that down below. Do you think it's worth it to get a bag that's a few hundred dollars or just get the $30 one? I'm just saying 30 as an example. Or skip that all together and just go straight for the high-end designer. What are your experiences with that? Let us know down below.